For a very long time, I actually didn't know that there were different types of steel, different types of aluminum, different types of stainless, and I thought they were all the same. To show you how oblivious I was, let me tell you a quick story. Before building the BMW, I actually got a 250 Honda Rabbit for 600 euros that my dad picked up for me. I wanted to build a bobber out of this little bike, so I needed to get some steel to make a seat pen and records, stuff like that. That was a few years ago and buying steel online wasn't anything that would have occurred to me. So I sat down, googled, where can I buy steel? A few different shops popped up. I called them and said, hey, can I buy steel from you? They were like, yeah, you can, but you need to get a three square meter sheet. That's the normal size of steel sheets for craftsmen and professionals. I obviously didn't need that much, but I was happy that I found a place where I could buy some steel. So I borrowed my girlfriend's little car, drove there and got this massive sheet of steel. They sliced it in two pieces and I squeezed it in the little car and drove back home. Super happy that I got some steel. A few years later, I am still carrying around this piece of metal because turns out it was galvanized steel. I had no idea that that was a thing and I only found out when I gave this to a friend and asked him if he could weld it and he was like, dude, this is garbage. You can't weld this. This is toxic if you heat it up. So I was like, hmm, I spent so much money on that and it's bad. How do I know what I need to get? Because almost every time when I asked someone to help me on the BMW or on the Rebel and I bought some steel, they were like, where did you get this from? What type of steel is it? And I never understood what they mean until I started my TIG welding journey and I had to look into different materials and especially aluminum, but then I expanded my research to steel. From my research, I now finally understand which are the best metal types for custom bike building. So I want to save you the hassle and share those with you. We're gonna go over mild steel, stainless steel and aluminum. Titanium is nice, yes, but I've never worked with it and it's very hard to work with from what I've heard. So I'm gonna leave that out because if you're gonna work with titanium, I guess you already know what you're doing. All of the three materials, mild steel, stainless steel and aluminum have different systems that categorize the different grades of each material. Let's start with mild steel. A commonly used grading system for mild steel is the SAE system. SAE stands for Society of Automotive Engineers. It's a four digit system where each of the digits stands for something specific. But all we need to know is that out of the nine categories that there are, number one stands for carbon steel. And that's the best thing for all your basic brackets and stuff like that that later get painted. It can rust, but you can weld it well. And it doesn't really matter which of the number one grade steels you get. There are different ones. You can get 1018, 1020, 1075. Here it's not too important. 1020 is very common, but what you need to look out for is how it's processed. There's hot rolled and cold rolled. For motorcycle fabrication, you want to stay away from hot rolled. The terms hot rolled and cold rolled refer to differences in production technique. And while technically not all steel is rolled, tubes and bars, for example, are drawn. I'm just gonna refer to everything as rolled. What happens when steel is hot rolled is that it's very very hot when it's processed and afterwards it's just left to cool down and then while it cools down two things happen that aren't perfect for custom bike building on the one hand it still changes its form slightly when it cools down so you don't get super nice tolerances and on the other hand a thin oxide layer forms that's also called scale that's kind of like black and crackly and it leaves your hands dirty when you touch the steel you can use that for building a workbench or stuff like that because it's cheaper but for custom bike building, you want to go with cold rolled steel. And cold rolled steel is also processed hot. But after the first hot step is done, it's processed again at room temperature. You get something like this with a much smoother surface finish, much tighter tolerances and sharp edges. So we want something like that. In the category of mild steels, there's another one that is very interesting for custom bike building. And that's category four, chromoly. The name chromoly comes from the two alloying elements chromium and molybdenum. And those two give its special characteristics. Due to the alloys, it has a much better strength to weight ratio and is much harder and stronger than regular carbon steel. It's basically 
carbon, steel, on steroids. However, these advantages also have some downsides. It's much harder to work with than regular carbon steel, especially when you weld it. Because it's so heat sensitive, you need to keep a few special things in mind to avoid cold cracking. The best promoli that you can get for custom bike building is 4130. Let's step it up a notch with the steels and move on to stainless steel. Stainless steel has two major advantages. For one, it can be polished almost to a mirror finish, and then it's also very corrosion resistant. The good corrosion resistance comes from its high percentage of chromium. Chromoly has around 1% of chromium, but stainless steel has at least 10.5%. It's this alloy that forms a protective layer that's called chromium oxide when exposed to oxygen that prevents the steel from rusting. But keep in mind that it can still rust if this protective layer ever gets damaged by mechanical wear or chemicals. So now that you know that, which stainless steel should you choose for your custom bike project? Well, first we need to know how stainless steel is actually categorized. For stainless steel, there's also the SAE system that is commonly used. Instead of four digits, this time it's a three digit system. And if you don't have to watch the budget, then three, two, one is the one you want to get. But if you're more reasonable and you do watch the budget, then 304 is the most commonly used. 309 is also fine to get if you can't get your hands on 304. While the SAE system is great and I really like the simplicity of it, it can happen that you don't find the right steer with the SAE number because maybe in your country they use a different classification code. Today there are so many different classifications for basically the same material. Let me just give you a quick example. The 304 stainless steel by the SAE standard might today also be graded as EN number 1.4305, EN name X8CRNIN18-9, UNS S30400, XYFCRNI18-9, XYFCRNI18-10, XYFCRNI19-9. Yes, I guess you get the point. It's basically the same situation for mild steel and aluminum, so if you have trouble finding what you're looking for, just look for alternative classifications and hopefully you can find what's used in your country. Country. All right, let's move on to aluminum. And I know in Britain you say aluminium. And while my accent might sometimes be referred to as British or even South African, that comes from me spending a year in Oxford with a South African family being their au pair. Since I'm German, I just take the liberty to mix and match US and UK English. So anyways, you probably just want to know which aluminum you should get. And for aluminum, there's also a scale, the Rau scale that classifies the different alloys. And what we need to know is that category five and category six are the best weldable. So those two will do for custom bike fabrication. Of course, not all aluminum is well weldable. If you go for category five, go for 5083 that's the one i got or 5086 they're pretty similar the holy grail for custom bike fabrication and automotive fabrication however is 6061 that's the one recommended by the hp academy fabrication course that i've enrolled in and many other sources so if you can get your hands on 6061 aluminum get that one i hope this was helpful to you i hope that you now know which material you should get and that my mistake was a lesson for all of us that not all steel is the same and you don't end up with a three square meter sheet of galvanized steel. If you want to dive a little bit deeper into the topic, I'm gonna to link a few resources down below. And since you're now shopping for metal for your custom bike project, you probably also need a way to fix the metal to your bike. So watch this video next to see how I've learned tick welding. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.